All six of these proofs deal with the use of parallel lines in their givens. And so because of that, uh, I wanted just to trigger a little bit of thought about that. Parallel lines really are delivering for you angle knowledge, not about lengths of sides or things like that. It really relates back to the diagram that we've done before, where if you were given two parallel lines, there are a number of angle relationships hiding in there. So you might talk about, you know, you know corresponding angles are equal. You might um, need to know that uh, alternate interior are equal or so on. Now the problem is is that it doesn't ever look like that. Um, the, the relationship isn't quite that simple. It's usually hidden in a set of triangles. So we would see, uh, we would see something like this appear. Um, and they would tell us that these would be parallel. Now, um, when we see this, we can go, oh, okay, I see the alternate interiors in here and in here, and we can state that. Now, one thing I wanted to just mention is typically the way I write it is I write parallel lines imply alternate interior angles are congruent. This is kind of how I do it. The idea is that you have to kind of state, well, now that I know things are parallel, now that I know that this parallel relationship is there, it allows me to make conclusions about angles and things like that. Now, sometimes uh, students can't see these relationships. So again, you know, a little highlighter along those parallel lines often um, can, you know, take the old diagram out and put in one that's a little more recognizable. Um, I would also say that most relationships that you're going to find uh, are going to be about, um, most of them are alternate interior, really. And the reason for that is because most everything is happening um, kind of within the shape, and so it's mostly interior type of stuff. But again, I would just say that typically... Um, don't use parallel lines to find things about lengths, only about angles, and they're very powerful in that way.